Welcome to the Chef's Corner. I'm your host, Brian Hernandez, and today we're here with the tenacious, the talented, the <laughs> trivial, I don't know, I couldn't think of another T-word, but Leah Skirto out there in the San Francisco Bay Area. How are you doing, Leah? Hi, Brian. I'm doing really well. Good. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to uh, sit down with us here in the Chef's Corner. Um, as you know, we just have a kind of a simple platform where we ask you all about pizza and try to get in the mind of the chef. So without any That's further good. ado... I think we're just going to jump right in. Sound good? All right, let's do it. All That's right. What I so, know, <laughs> doesn't say much. <laughs> so this first question we always ask is, what is your earliest pizza memory? What's, what's the first thing that you remember? So, okay. That's a good question. I like that question. Um, so I grew up in um, a little mountain town as a kid uh, up at Lake Tahoe. Um, North Lake Tahoe, to be more specific, and there was, it was, a you know, God, I mean, it's busier now, but it was really small town. There's this one of the, you know, like, where it's a bunch of little towns around a lake, mm-hmm. and population 300, population 400, you know, the just tiny little place, so everybody knew each other, and there was um, a family friend who owned a pizzeria, and it was called um, Peluso's. I believe it's Peluso's a pizza. They've left Kings Beach now, but I think they're in Reno. Um, Peluso's a pizza. My, you know, parents were friends with. Uh, I think his name was Andy or Anthony. I don't remember his first name hundred percent. But anyway, so it was like we used to go there all the time. That was the spot. And I had the palate of like a 50 year old man who smoked his whole life, but like extra cheese and garlic was my go-to as like a little kid. <laughs> but so I think it was my sixth, sixth or seventh birthday. And we went to Peluso's and uh, he brought me back into the kitchen and to let me make my own pizza on my birthday. And, you know, in my mind, I cooked that whole pizza start to finish. I pounded it out. I threw it in the air. I put on everything. Reality now that I do that for little kids, you know, maybe I put the cheese on (laughs) and spread it out a little bit. (laughs) But, you know, in my head, I made, like, I made that pizza. That was my first pizza I ever made. And, um, you know, so we put it together. I'm standing on a stool, and he's behind me probably making the actual pizza. (laughs) <laughs> and you know it says okay you're gonna pick it up and bring it over to the oven for me and uh so I pick it up and immediately drop it on the floor and <laughs> to this day it's the only pizza that I have ever really felt bad about dropping on the floor and I've probably dropped a hundred more pizzas on the floor since then like that's my pizza memory is making a making my own pizza at my birthday at Peluso's in Kings Beach that, man, that's a good memory. That, um, yeah. I don't remember the first time I made my pizza. It definitely wasn't until I was older and yeah, maybe even shaving at that point. So, um, so <laughs> did that um, kind of frame your desire to get into pizza? or How did you get started in pizza? Was it just something that just kind of happened? So, I mean, I got started in pizza because I was in college and broke. I, had, <laughs> I was a that's, that's, that's a very similar story. I hear that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it happens. So, but I was um, 18 and I was going to UC Santa Cruz and I had, uh, you know, just ran out of graduation money that I was living on and I needed a job. So I went downtown Santa Cruz and one of the first places, and I'd actually never eaten at Pizza My Heart before. I walked in there for a job, but I walked in there. I said, Oh dude, pizza. I get, I can serve pizza. I love pizza. You know? So I walked in and found the guy in charge and, uh, asked him if they were hiring. They said, yeah, like, can you start tonight? I was like, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I need money. Yes. 
so they were like, okay, we'll see how you do it. You know, it was probably, I think it was a Friday night or Saturday night. They're like, we'll see how you do. If you can make it through tonight, you can, you can keep the job. And, uh, so they, and literally just threw me into the fire, slinging slices. And I'd been in plenty of restaurants. I grew up in a restaurant. So my parents owned restaurants as a kid. My dad still owns a restaurant, but that's how I got into it. That, you know, I think I was, I'd spent like maybe a month working in the counter and then, um, they years ago we used to have a pasta bar and do and do pastas as well mm -hmm. and so after uh, about a month they moved me up to a pasta cook and then after pasta cook they you know i think within two months i was cooking they wanted to make me a supervisor uh, but to be a supervisor you had to learn how to cook pies so i spent a month as a cook and then you know, I think within three or four months, I was a supervisor and knew how to spin pies and full cook. All right. So this was in college. Um, not your first job, obviously. But um, so how old were you when you got this job at Pizza Mart? 18. January, okay. January 97. Okay. So you're 18, January 97. Um, have you been with Pizza Mart ever since? Or was there been, hiatuses? I took a, an 11 month hiatus in 2001. And I moved to uh, Portland, Oregon, um, which I love. But also, you know, it was just the, man, the weather got me down. Hmm. And uh, I think after about six months of just rain, 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 I was like, how do I get back to California? And, uh, you know, made my exit strategy and ended up calling um, Tim Silva just because we'd always remained friends. And uh, just to call him and tell him I was moving back to California, I was moving to San Francisco. And he said, oh, do you have a job? I was like, well, no, I mean, we just, not yet. I haven't been there, you know? I don't know what I'm gonna do. And he said, oh, you know, we're opening a store in San Mateo, which is maybe 20 minutes south of San Francisco. He said, we need a GM. You wanna you want be a GM in San Mateo? I was like, <laughs> yes I do easy I got a job perfect I can pay rent so what do you think the uh, hardest hurdles to overcome in starting a pizza place are for me the hardest part is just the mental um and physical toll that comes with opening a restaurant you're there you know from open to close every day for two solid months or more mm -hmm. you know and and it, as it progresses and as you train, you know, people, you, you can take breaks here. You can take off for an hour. You can, can maybe I don't need to close tonight. You know, they can clean the store and do the dishes. And, but every single store opening, it's like, I do, we do everything. You know, there's no, it's not just because I'm in charge doesn't mean it's not my job. Just to pick your brain as a chef, um, a per, just your personal favorite. What's your favorite ingredient? You know, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite ingredient. That's uh, all ingredients are created equal. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I get that from uh, from a lot of people too. Yeah, I mean, it's I, hard to pick one, but I mean, if you're on a desert island and this is going to be the only pizza you eat for the rest of your life, oh, what are you going to use to make uh, uh, to make it with or to eat? Uh, so, I my favorite. I just my favorite thing to eat is just plain cheese to be honest. But if I had to throw a topping on there, I'd throw pepperoni uh, or basil, pepperoni or basil. I'm a big oh. basil fan. Um, I like them both together, but that's like, when I go and try somebody's pizza, like I just eat the, I just get cheese, whatever their cheese, or if it's a margarita, it's a margarita, but uh, you know, I just, I want to try, I want to try it at its most basic elements. And mm -hmm. you know, if it's good, then I throw toppings on it. Sure. But mm -hmm. That's my go-to is plain. Now, here's another one. This is probably easier to answer. What is, like, uh, one ingredient that you will never use uh, or you won't let your staff use? If you see them, if they bring it in their personal lunch, you, you send them home for the day, you unfriend them on Facebook. You know. <laughs> Personally, I don't like to use fake meats. I like to – I'm not a big fan of fake soy stuff or tofu -y stuff. I just feel like it's – it doesn't have a flavor and you have to flavor it to taste like something else. And I'm, why don't you just use that product that you're trying to make it taste like, you know, 
So on a personal note, I hate tomatoes. I don't like to eat tomatoes, personally. Okay. I love sauce. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I like sauce. Don't get me wrong. I love sauce. I love salsas. But actual, like, biting into a tomato, it gives me the willies. Well, yeah, I still it's a textural won't. thing. Yeah, I still won't eat a tomato like an apple, which I've seen. <laughs> yeah. People do. I, yeah, I still have to slice it up. But um, even when they're cooked and you bite into it and it, ha you know, the skin comes off, it's like, oh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> all right. Hey, you know what? I'm not judging. We're all encompassing. Um, like you said, we're just taking everything in today. She doesn't like and tomatoes. Ryan, I appreciate a tomato and I appreciate a good tomato. And I actually will still eat a tomato. I would just like, if I go and order a burger, no tomatoes. If I go and order a sandwich, no tomatoes. Is there one ingredient that you guys don't use there now at Pizza My Heart that maybe you wish you could or you'd like to incorporate or start testing more recipes with and maybe bring into the fold? Absolutely. I've for years um, been wanting to put watercress, build a pizza around watercress. And I'll tell you why. It's a personal thing for me. My best friend, his family owns and farms an organic water, uh, organic watercress. They got a farm up in Petaluma, California. Mm -hmm. And um, it like all of the, so all of the competitions never fall around watercress season. Mm -hmm. And so it, like, it's always at the tail end or, and it's like, nah, it's not the best or it's, you know, so I've like for years been trying to work out, like I need a competition when during watercress season. <laughs> when is that season summer basically dead summer in california we usually get it's pretty easy to get really great produce year round and that's one of the few that is really truly seasonal even out here where exactly is pizza my heart and uh how many locations are you up to now i know you told me some of the history and you came back uh when you left and there was only a couple at the time but, um, so we are in the San Francisco Bay Area, the greater Bay Area. The company started in Santa Cruz, California, and uh, well, down in the capital of Village, actually, Santa Cruz, and then there's a little, the next little town over is called Capitola, um, and that was just a little hole in the wall, no seats, just a window, um, slinging slices on the beach. We're, there, there was 25 total right now. Oh, wow. Impressive. Yeah. Very nice. So... Obviously, started out in California. Um, mm -hmm. When they opened, did they consider themselves California style? Or I guess a better question is, is how do you define California style? Or being out there, do you just call it pizza? So the, the original um, owner of Pizza My Heart brought his family's recipe out from New Jersey, which is kind of like the style of pizza we do because we do sauce on top of the cheese. It's a hand-tossed dough thin crust dough. Our roots are in that East Coast thin crust style pizza, but it's definitely been California. You know, once you start throwing apples and figs and pesto, and I think that's what kind of defines it as California. Well, it sounds that's like it's, um, it, it was started as a New York style pizza that's been Californicated. That's a word now. That's a word. <laughs> but, but, um, <laughs> Um, it sounds more like um, California style is out, outside the box ingredients, you think? Um, yeah, for me, I think that's local, fresh, a lot of produce, heavy produce, heavy, um, just whatever we can get locally. And we are really, really lucky, especially here in the Bay Area. You know, we got um, uh, Salinas, all the mushrooms and the lettuce is all coming right. I mean, you know. As a crow flies, we're no more than 90 miles from anything, any any of the big produce items that are growing here, the Stanislaw and that whole tomato country. So when we put new pizzas on the on the menu, it's uh, it's almost always something that um, we've won an award for at one of the competitions, whether, um, whether it was me or Tim, both of us do the competitions and, and compete. So it always starts with, there's some arguing, <laughs> but it always, it often, so it always, always starts with an ingredient often is a fairly different from our first go at it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 it evolves and ideas spring up from 
the, this pizza, we made this, but, oh, you know, it'd be good with that. So let's change this. And then by the end, you know, a month later, you got a completely different pizza than what the uh, original idea was. There's really two ways for me. There's two things that, that we do for the competition preparation and for new product um, and new menu items. And it often will start with one ingredient. What do I want to work with right now? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's been in the past, it's been pork belly. It's been finger limes. It's been uh, delicata squash. Uh, um, you know, so it, it, a lot of it is what, figs you know figs too we've done you know so it's what do I want to work with and how do I create how do I create a pizza around that um and sometimes it's what do I you know even a dish sometimes like how do I take this dish that I love and put that on a pizza mm -hmm. and so so it often will start there and then there's something else that I always do uh before every competition and I have a pizza party at my house and I tell all of my invite, you know, six, eight people, most invite my friends over and I tell them, you got to bring one or two ingredients for a pizza. I don't, I don't want to know what it is. Don't tell me what it is. Show up with something cool. Yeah. You know? And I tell them I'll bring the basics. I got the cheese, the sauce. I got some pepperoni. I got some sausage. Don't bring that. Bring me something weird that always spurs some really great ideas and like, you know, it's flavor pairing and this and that, but it's like, Whoa, okay. I got, you brought this and you brought that and those two things are going to go phenomenal together. And then let's put them together with this also. And, and so that often spurs a lot of the, uh, the pizzas that we've done. I was going to say, does, um, do you guys take like staff submissions? If somebody comes to you who works there and says, Hey, I got a good idea. Do you, do you listen to it and try it or? Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I'm open. I'm open to trying new things. Um, <laughs> and we're, you know, we, I am open to the to staff input. It doesn't, you know, if it's not uh, competition worthy, it doesn't usually make it very far. Okay. Well, that was going to be my next question. How does it get on the menu? Does it have to win at a competition before you add it? At this point? Yeah, we have, you know, and we've been very fortunate to have won um, a few competitions, <laughs> which helps us keep our menu fresh. Uh, but the, yeah, that's basically how we're putting stuff on the menu now is it's, it, cause it comes in with built-in marketing. Mm, yeah. You know? It's easier to add something in when you've won an award with it and it just creates a buzz and people want to try it. It's not just like something new. It's, whoa, this actually won an award? Well, it must be good. You think those, I mean, yeah, th those two little words on a menu, you they carry a lot of weight as far yeah, as going absolutely it, it, it if for no other reason than it's intriguing for people mm -hmm. you know it catches their eye you want an award with this it must be must be tasty i gotta try it even if it's not something you know we got some weird stuff on our menu that we've won competitions with uh that people you know one of them is our our figgy piggy and it's um figs feta bacon and fresh sage and i've had numerous people say even employees like ah, i don't want to try that like that sounds weird or and then they do and they're like wow that was actually really good but you know i only try i'm only going to try it because you won an award with it and then then then, then then it turns into their favorite pizza breaks the ice gets people outside of their comfort zone so yeah that's great well just i mean speaking of the you know <clears throat> comfort zones here we're going to jump into the part that we like to call the scott wieners lightning round Hit me. Mr. Scott, who was the first person right. to do this. I'm trying not to give you something that you've never tasted, but um, All right. I'm pretty confident this is going to be a good one. So without further ado, cornbread. Cornbread on pizza? Pizza, crust, how would you incorporate cornbread into a recipe? Just off the top of my head, I would probably use it as a finishing move and crumble it on top of something similar to the way you would use a, a regular breadcrumb and then get it toasty. So put it on before you cook it or? Towards, yeah, probably to probably towards the very end. Okay. What, what do you it think? Would be, it would be cooked, but I wouldn't want to put it on too soon because it would, uh, I don't want it to get soggy or absorb any moisture, but I would want it to get crispy. So I'd probably do it in the last, uh, depending upon your oven temperature as well, maybe okay. the last 30 seconds to a minute. 
Why don't you give me two ingredients, other ingredients that you would put on that pie with that cornbread, though, Ooh. that you would pair it with? Hmm. Jalapenos? That's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, one and more. sausage. All right. Sausage, jalapenos, and cornbread. I like it. It's uh, actually a very good, <laughs> tasty combination. I, I've eaten it numerous times. Oh, have you? Nice. <laughs> yes. I've been there, done that. So, oh, very good. Good answer. Great answers. Um, next one, sour cream. It's tricky because, you know, you don't want to cook it. You, don't, you know, it's – I'm just going to yeah. let you go. Sour cream, what would you do? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's two ways you can go with that. You could take the sour cream and turn it into a sauce, some sort of sauce, or you could, you know, do a Mexican-style pizza and do dollops, use it as a finishing move. So something Mexican-style, you think? Um, you give me all finishers. <laughs> I know it's it's what happens. I'm a big fan too of um, after cooked toppings. Like mm. uh, I hate cooking basil. I hate cooking cilantro. Like I want those on. And then maybe that's a California thing too. But I want those on fresh. I want them green. I want them pretty. Um, yeah, I, you know, you know, I would never cook them. <laughs> last one. Um, I don't think this one needs to be a finisher, but uh, fennel. Ah. Oh. Dude, talking my language, I absolutely love roasting <laughs> fennel. And um, one of my favorite pieces, I actually cook this for my wife all the time because she's a vegetarian. Uh, but it's, so I roast roasted fennel, really simple, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And then I do a mushroom medley. I love mixing shiitakes, creminis, and oysters. Uh, and kind of giving those a little saute with garlic and butter and thyme, fresh thyme. And then um, I also really love to do a shaved fennel after that mm. you kind of toss with a little, you can toss it with arugula and then just lemon, some lemon and olive oil. And so you can do the fennel both ways. You can have it roasted and you can have it shaved, tossed fresh shaved on top. So after the pizza comes out, you get a little um, crunch as well as the roasted flavors. And then you can even use the fronds, a little bit of the fennel, fennel fronds for um, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. uh, just light on, so it adds a little nice green to that pizza. That, that's um, actually something I've been looking to try to make. So I think you I might uh, have to steal something just like that. It, it's great. It, and, you know, for a meat eater, throw some, you know, throw some Italian uh, pinch, you know, pinch and pull the bulk sausage on there. Mm. Um because fennel and sauce, you know, fennel with the fennel and the anise in the actual Italian sausage. Right. If you put that on, it's a great, great no brainer pairing, really. All right. Well, that was relatively painless, right? Scott Wiener's lightning round. Uh, we like yeah. to thank uh, Leah Skirtle for playing today. As we always say, there are no losers. So um, <laughs> I will uh, be shipping it's your a prize. Of, uh, second place. <laughs> San Francisco uh, snow globe that'll nice. be arriving in the mail. Excellent. I'm not sending you that. That's mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, no, no, no. I'm keeping that. I'll send you one. How about that? That would got, be awesome. I got access to lots of that. All right. Well, after successfully uh, um, guiding your way through to Scott Winter's lightning round, now we're going to get on to, you know, a few more Leah-specific questions. Um, oh. Just as somebody that I've known for a while on the U.S. Pizza team, kind of been definitely impressed with all your, your pies. Um, I love how in San Diego you won that our um, mystery basket in, ingredient Competition yeah. at uh, uh, Dominic's Italian restaurant. And you won, what did you win that with? So, uh, I, uh, the mystery ingredient was uh, I forget the name of the cherries, but they're the fancy cocktail cherries. Um, Manhattan, uh, Manhattan old fashioned cherries. Mm. Uh, so, what I did with those, um, and I, you know, I was looking all over for two things that I couldn't find. The only two things that, uh, weren't at Dominic's was uh, powdered sugar and a mandolin. So I ended up I, <laughs> cutting um, thin, very thinly slicing my lemons on a meat slicer. Hey, right behind you. <laughs> that was <laughs> very, very that. precarious and it was a tight spot. So I'm like, nobody bump me. I don't want to lose a finger. I'm trying to cut something. This is the wrong tool for the job, but I'm going to make it work. So I did very thin like paper thin slices of lemon, mm -hmm. rind on and all. Um, and just a tiny little bit of mozzarella, a 
tiny little bit of butter. <laughs> <laughs> and by tiny, I mean a lot of butter. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, as it, when it came out, I uh, sifted a ton of, brown, of powdered sugar on there as well. So it's, it's a good pizza. It's a dessert well, pizza. And then, and then I use the cherries and I kind of drizzled the juice mm -hmm. all over it. And I put the uh, actual whole cherries on there. So we've already discussed that um, the two words award winning go good on a menu. Um, aside yeah. from that, do you think just even if you don't win an award, is it, is it beneficial for uh, people in pizzerias to compete um, the, the, in, in teams like U.S. Pizza teams or other teams out there? Um, is yeah, it you know, for them to go compete and do these events? I think it's, I, kind of, I feel like it's important. To, um, it's become an important thing for us. Not the, you know, not necessarily the competition itself, but the camaraderie and the ideas that just get flowing when you start talking to people and seeing what they're doing and everybody's, people are sharing, you know, they're sharing technique and they're sharing ideas and they're sharing, you know, everything. No, it, about running a restaurant or being in a kitchen or making pizzas and you just learn a lot. And I think it's a, I think it's a great environment to put yourself in, um, to further your skills and to further your knowledge. Um, I just think it's a, it's really beneficial. So, um, I guess we're going to jump into something a little more, um, I don't want to say personal, but uh, a little more hard hitting, I should say. Um, you're a woman. I am. You are. <laughs> Do you ever have difficulties in the industry because, uh, you know, you're a woman in a position of power in, in, a, in such a big company? Um, just, I mean, either in this company, uh, in the industry as itself, or just in the world in general? Sure. I mean, Absolutely. I think um, probably every woman has, really. Um, so is, is there something? You know, that, I've, had, I've, had a, I've had a couple of instances with uh, employees at you know, don't want to, don't want to listen to me or don't want to hear what I have to say. Um, sorry, I thought somebody knocked. Um, you know, with the position I was in, they never really made it very far because it's like the, the other, you know, one of the other people who operations manager for Pizza My Heart, Allison, is also a woman. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, with us, it was, if you didn't want to listen to what a woman was saying, you're going to have a hard time because upper management was 50, 50, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, um, well, what about like in the know, industry in general? It, yeah. In the industry. Absolutely. You know, it's definitely a male dominated industry. Um, and I, there's definitely been some experiences, uh, you know, in Italy, for instance, uh, you and I kind of talked about this. There was that one day, um, where some uh, some guys came over and were, oh, we want a picture with the U.S. pizza team, you know, and it was all of us. We were all standing there, you know, it was, and they walked up and handed me the camera to take the photo. Like, <laughs> we don't need we don't need you in the photo. You can actually take the photo. <laughs> you, you know, it's like, I'm sure you were wearing the jacket as well, too. So oh, oh yeah, <laughs> there was it, it, there was no question that I was not on the team or you know on the team or not it was you're the woman you take the photo of all the men so you know and you, just, I just, you, gotta, you can't let that shit bother you though you know it's, you're no. not going to get anywhere if you just stay hung up on that sort of thing um you know i really make it a point to you know try to touch base and say hi and you know be friends with the other women in the competition anytime any competitions that I see because there's not that many of us and if we don't stick together and if we're, we don't have our backs nobody else is going to sometimes so I, I try to I try to make it a point to talk to other women at competitions and 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 just be there for them and support them and cheer them on and champion for each other you know um, do you do you feel that it's ever held you back in your career at, at all I mean like you know either overtly or covertly you know do you think that it's been a, a factor at all uh, you know it, it's hard to say pizza my heart's been phenomenal and that's never been a factor um that i've seen at pizza my heart so absolutely not there no mm -hmm. um you know i don't know I, I there's things that happen that i don't know about 
that maybe, you know, maybe somebody selected somebody else for to do something with my name was on the table. I don't, and I'm not aware of, I'm not sure. I try not to, like I said, I try not to, I try not to let that sort of thing affect me. It, and it does. And sometimes it's unavoidable. Um, but if I just do my best and work my hardest and be who I am, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't want me cause I'm a woman, then that's your loss. Those are good words. What, um, aside from that, is there any other tips for maybe other females out there currently, you know, coming up the ranks or yeah, dealing with this? What is your best tip that you come can out, have? Come out and get involved and compete and, and talk to each other and be there. You know, we all got to be there for each other really is what it comes down to. And if you're worried about doing it because it's, there's nothing but me, you know, I've been at a lot of competitions that I'm the only woman mm. and, uh, and it would be cool if there was more, more women at some of these competitions, you know? And so yeah. don't be afraid to do it just because you'll be the only woman there, you know? Well, what about just even in, in general in their, in their personal, not personal, but their business life? Is there, if there's something that's maybe getting them down, what's the best piece of advice you can give them besides um, what you've already given us? If, is there anything else that you're maybe an experience where you, you, you did something that just helped you get by? No, just don't just try not to take it all personal you know fight fight through it be you be who you are and um you know don't don't sweat the you know don't sweat the small things and if somebody's you know make your presence known too you know like you gotta you gotta show up you gotta be there and you gotta not be not be small so to speak, make, be there. If you're going to be there, be known, make yourself known, be, be out there. That's great. Be a presence. So. Be a, yeah. Be a, be a presence. All right. Well, Leah, thank you so much for your time today. Um, okay. This is a, I think, you know, as far as competitions, as far as like succeeding in this industry, I think you've given us a lot of information. Um, if they want to learn more about you or pizza, my heart, where can people find you guys? Uh, pizzamyheart.com. If you want to find out about Pizza My Heart, if you want to find out more about me, I don't know, man. You can follow me on Instagram, Skirtographer. Skirtographer, <laughs> I like that. Skirtographer, S C U R T O Grifer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You can throw my Instagram handle on there. You, I'm sure you got it. Somewhere. I'll edit it up there. Yeah. That, right. you get but, that um, one in post. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I'm, uh, caught me actually on my last day with pizza my heart so uh through the summer i will be up in spending some time with uh one of my best friends owns a pizzeria up there and he's asked me to come up and get into his kitchen and um see what i can make some changes up there oh. so i will be this summer i will be up in uh it's called good neighbor pizzeria um in portland oregon Okay. In the Northeast in the Woodlawn neighborhood. And they do not, you know, part of the, what I got to do is they do not have any sort of social media presence going on. So, so that's what you're going to be helping them up there. Yeah, with. Well, you know, the goal was the kitchen, but I said, you know, dude, you're not even on Instagram. <laughs> He's like, what? I don't know. I'm old. I don't know. Help me. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not on Instagram that much. Too. I think I got two cat pictures up there or something. But, uh, yeah. All right, Leah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll get this up there, and this will be in the June-July issue where people can read about California-style pizza, Pizza My Heart, Leah's adventures on the U.S. pizza team, and anything else that you might want to ask us. So thanks again so much for your time, and we'll see you guys next time in the Chef's Corner. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>